Welcome, everyone, and uh, welcome to Jim Pinard, our newest member. All right, the disclaimer. Today is Monday, June 10th at 6 p.m., and this is a meeting of the Senior Center Site Selection and Building Committee. This meeting will be held in person at the location provided on this notice. Members of the public are welcome to attend this in-person meeting. Please note that while an option for remote attendance and or participation via Zoom is being provided as a courtesy to the public, the meeting or hearing will not be suspended or terminated if technological problems interrupt the virtual broadcast unless otherwise required by members of the public with particular interest in a specific item on this agenda should make plans for in-person versus virtual attendance accordingly. This meeting will be live on Zoom. The public may access the proceedings by joining Zoom meeting ID 375-414-6055 or calling 929-205-6099. For additional information about remote participation, please contact Carly Antonellis, Assistant Town Manager at atm at air.ma.us or 978-772-8220, extension 100, prior to the meeting. So, uh, call the meeting to order at 6.03 p.m. Time. Yes. And um, I would like to propose an amendment to the agenda. Um, we have the minutes from April 10th. I just forgot to put them on the list. It's a very minor amendment. Um, any other amendments to the agenda? No? All right, can I get a motion to accept the revised agenda? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, so that brings us to uh, the approval of the minutes. I think they should all, they all went out to the email and then the paper copies are included in your packet in front of you. So uh, let's start with April 10th. Were there any questions on those? Them. I'm not at the meeting, so I'm not. Mean, uh, well, you can still go. Oh, I'm sorry about that. You said you made a motion? Yeah. A motion. I'll make a motion that we approve the April 10th minutes. Okay. Right. All in favor? All right. All right. All right. Mm -hmm. All right. And the next one is um, the minutes from May 15th. I move that we approve the minutes from May 15th. Second. Okay. Aye. Any discussion? Good slide change. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yep. Okay. In the attendance, you've got Dave, and then you've got the apps. Um, Sorry, what was that? On the first line, you have Dave Brothers being in attendance, and the second line, you have the being apps. Oh, yep. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Just, All right. He was absent. Yes, he was absent. Oh. Any other? I'll, so, any other edits? So then I think the motion would be to approve the minutes as as revised. As revised. I move that we approve the May 15th minutes as revised. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Um, the third one is the meeting minutes from May 22nd. <laughs> uh, and a shout out to Maureen in, um, well, to Dennis for doing the April 10th, but also to Maureen in the town manager's office who has graciously agreed to do minutes from our Zoom recording. Yeah. It's very helpful. So any very, very detailed? Very I move that we approve the minutes from May 22nd. You got a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Sarah says aye. Okay. All right. That was fast. All right. Thank you. Okay. So then. That brings us down to item number three, which is updates on 
uh, due diligence for the Broughton Harvard Road and Bishop Road sites. Um, I guess I'll I can start with the um, Broughton Harvard Road one. Um, uh, Dan and I met with um, Dr. Renda and then also with two members of the school committee to just float the idea um, of of the Broughton Harvard Road site, just to get a sort of a preliminary sense of their support for the idea. And um, I would, I'll, I'll take a stab at summarizing it. I think they're very supportive of the idea of a senior center. Um, they had some things for us to think about, which we will look into and find out more information about. Um, I think in general, it would be fair to say that they support. Is that a yeah. good summary? That's good, Katie, yeah. When did you guys meet? When did you meet? Uh, about an hour ago. Squeezed <laughs> yeah. it in right before yeah. the meeting. Did, did Robert meet with the superintendent prior? Oh. Uh, yeah, yeah. Very yeah. good. Okay. Uh, were the school committee members from Air, Curly, one of each? Um, there were two members from Air. And so I think the idea was just to talk to a smaller subset of people in a less formal way without triggering the open meeting law, just to get a sense of where to start and what to consider and what to think about. So, so can you well tell us who those members I have no idea. I don't know why we... I'm sorry. But yeah. My question was, who, who were they? I mean, you know, I may have been feeling so <laughs> So it was Kevin... President and, and then Erica, I don't know her last name is. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yes, it's um it looks like it's Sarah's second oh. <clears throat> So um I th I think the in general, um, you know, none of these are like it was not a hard no. And so as long as it's not a hard no, I think we can continue to move forward and continue to explore what the what the issues would be for each of those sites. So that's that's encouraging. Um, Dan, did you want to report on the gate for the Bishop Road? Yeah. Okay. Uh, Bishop Road site. So this is near the brush dump. So we had met uh, previously, as the committee knows, um, with the folks over in Devons, and they actually really want to move the gate for their purposes as well. And so they still hadn't set up the meeting yet with U.S. Fisheries and Wildlife because they they need to talk to them to get approval to move it all the way to that triangle. And so there's I talked to them the other day. They're still working to set that meeting up. They're going to cue me in on it. I'll, I'll uh, let them know. Um, so that um, it still is sort of moving, progressing slowly. Um, they also inquired about some signage help from the town of Air, but the mm -hmm. Uh, Bishop and Park Street, because the gate's going to move much further down to alert people that you know, advanced of, of, the, of the gate being closed. So, what, so we're working together on that. So that not too much new to report on the gate. <laughs> it's in progress. Um, I got another stuff there. Let's see. Um, <clears throat> there was, um, yeah. yeah, you do want one with the other things for okay. Bishop. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so some of the other things were, uh, I, I've reached out to um, divisions of uh, fisheries and wildlife, the state division of fisheries and wildlife, they're in charge of natural heritage and endangered species program, just to talk about the priority habitat that's over the, the area where we're looking to possibly construct and get a feeler there, um, just to get an, you know, an advanced sort of uh, you know, details that I can give to me about, hey, here's what, we're, here's what we should expect and not expect. So I haven't had a, a full conversation with them yet, and we can set that up. Um, so that's kind of the big one there. That you know, we also mentioned the areas in an ACEC, but that's an area of critical environmental concern. And basically, what that triggers is an environmental notification form. And we went over this before, but it's basically that the state has this sort of repository for projects that may have uh, significant environmental impacts. So such as in an ACEC. So a project going in there needs to go through this process and it, it gets published in the in, um, environmental monitor, it's called. 
And then public agencies, members of the public, anyone can comment on a project to say, hey, I have an issue with this. So including Natural Heritage Endangered Species Program. Um, so they're kind of the big player in it. I don't foresee any other public agencies having a big deal with the project of this magnitude where it's located. Um, so I think really it's talking to divisions of fisheries and wildlife at Massachusetts level for the priority habitat is the, the big one and environmentally. I mean, I still don't expect there to be any major issues with it, with that permit, but um, they're the ones we want to reach to first. Um, is there anything else? Yeah. When you spoke to Devons on the follow-up on the Cape, they had initially a concern with whether there was going to be any wetlands required. They were going to have to do a notice of intent or just an RDA. Uh, did they tell anything about that? Did they we didn't talk. Did you go to these guys yet about that? No, we haven't. We didn't talk any details about wetlands and NOIs. No, we did. They kind of just, Shane Malone and John Mark Arell, Shane Malone's DPW director, yeah. John Mark Arell's director of engineering over at Mass Development. So they communicated together about setting up this initial meeting with fisheries and wildlife. But we didn't talk any design, location, yeah. Like that. Yeah. Well, that was one thing they did say they yeah. try to check before they got back to this. Yeah. And yeah. their preference is to move it down all the way to that triangle. Yeah. Wow. Well, yeah. They want to open that area yeah. up with the, the pollinator garden, the trail. It's just yeah. get to turn around there. Yeah. Um, just correct. Uh, Couple of questions. What, what is the U.S. Fisheries and Wildlife? Um, so that's um, what is their concern, or where? What? So, so I don't have a map, but they own or own they they manage the Oxbow Wildlife yep. National Wildlife Refuge, and so that boundary actually cuts right through I call it McPherson or Bishop Road. <laughs> so, yeah, between um, between the existing gate and that triangle, the boundary cuts right through there. So mass development can't put the gate past that boundary. Right. Fish, U.S. fisheries and wildlife. And, and on this, on the state um, fisheries and wildlife and the public comment, what does the public comment period look like? Like, does that have to be available for their comment for two weeks or six months? Or it's a, I think it's a thirty day comment 30 day. period that it, it gets posted for thirty days, and then they, uh, then the comment period ends, and then basically after that, the executive office of energy and environmental affairs. For the state, they're the ones who do the final sign off certificate. So they review all the comments and say, okay, you're all set. Or they say, you need to submit an environmental impact report, which is the next level step. And I've never had to do that, but so those are the details of it, the weeds of it. <laughs> Did you talk to Ann Gagnon to see if she contact locally or somebody else? Um, I That's reached out to Misty Ann Merrill. She's over at, I've worked with her on several projects. So <laughs> yeah, we'll see where I land. But. Mm -hmm. Oh, and uh, I just happened to be driving by and I saw the gate was closed last week or at the end of the preceding week. And I, it wouldn't have been flooding. We know why? Or, I don't know. Amanda crossings? No, I was, I was just I was just wondering. If, yeah, if I don't know. The gate has been open almost all the time and I just noticed it was closed. I don't know. Are I'm not sure why. We have a terrible storm in terrible movement season. I'd have to ask. I know Shane Malone, he did indicate the salamanders are right, like for a couple of weeks. He was in April, they closed it for that. But I don't know specifically why it's closed the other day. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then I that's that's it. that conversation would clarify is based on where those migratory patterns are, like where the gate could be moved to. Right? Yeah, I think that'll be part of it. Yeah. Thank you, Dan. Yeah. Uh, any other outstanding due diligence items? I think that was them. Um, already. So I think that brings us to the draft program. So we talked kind of at length at one of our previous meetings, and yeah. I apologize, I didn't put um, I didn't put that in the packet. What Dan did was from comments that we received, we relayed this out the same 
set up with the colors. And as time goes on, these colors will trans transform into schematic design. Mm -hmm. So what this does is shows the size in relationship to the square footage so that you get a sense of, you know, I always like to emphasize that the, the red or the light red is the program, which is why we're building this thing. And then the other ones are support spaces. And, uh, blue being bathroom, uh, the light blue, I think, is administration or storage. 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 And I think... And uh, admin yeah, purple admin and, and the purple. light is... The yellow is circulation. Which is wellness. Yeah, the wellness. We, we do a slightly different color for, for wellness. So it's a program element, but it has kind of a different... It's not completely open. And this gives you an idea, and I think this for Dan if you mentioned the square footage is uh, about 14,178. That's that's gross. That's gross. Net is net is around eleven thousand eight hundred fifteen. And the the quote unquote attic space, if we end up with with gable, the attic space has um items in it that are not counted in the square footage. It's, it's like just a raw space here. for IT and our mechanical equipment. Rather than building a mechanical equipment on the occupied floor, which is a lot more expensive, we put it up top. And that space is not carried as a square footage because it's not a code issue. It's so, not in a code so issue. this isn't part of the gross? No. Oh, no. not part of the gross. Oh. That's up. The attic space is quite large. Um, but if we're doing the stretch code, the attic space has an ERV in it, which is about 35 feet long and 8 feet wide, and weighs about 5,000 pounds. And uh, that's the energy recovery unit, which is part of the mass stretch code. And that sits up in there. And rather than buying space anywhere else, just because we have the gables, mm -hmm. we can just put it up. So we about ERV again. Energy recovery unit. Part of the mass stretch energy code, which I believe error is a part of the yeah. thing. Yeah. And, um, and it, what it does, just to give you a quick idea, in the wintertime, warm air is expelled out of the building because it's a publicly occupied space. Quite a bit of air goes out. So we absorb that heat to a big disk that sucks up the heat. And as the disk turns, the air that's coming in, let's say it's 23 air is coming in. It comes through that disk, takes the, the heat that is being sent out, and puts it back into that air as it comes in. So it saves energy. It does the reverse in the summer. Uh, the warmer air from in, uh, the cooler air that goes out is absorbed in the disk. And as it turns around, the fresh air coming in from outside picks up that coolness so that you um, are getting a maximum efficiency. But yeah, otherwise, you're just dumping the air out. Yeah. Whether it's warm, hot, or cold, and it it actually works very well. Oh, I love the idea. Very sophisticated, mm -hmm. and it has just this is we're looking at using uh, what, what's the acronym for our, our air conditioning? Are the mini splits? Yeah, they're e. Yeah. Uh, yeah. They're, <laughs> I'll think of it. Anyhow, yeah. we have a split system. The, uh, units. Mini heat pumps? Yeah, they're not really heat pumps, but they're for heat pumps. Yeah, they're like that, but that's not what it is. I'll, I'll, you know, I'll come See, better prepared. The building we looked at in Wilmington had a, a large, uh, you had a heat recovery unit there too. Yeah, that was Plus one in big, uh, big air handling unit. Yeah, the ERV, the that's it. MAU ERV is the big air handling unit, and then the yeah. makeup air unit. But that's it. That's yeah, usually. same thing. It's all all the same system. And then outside, you would have seen um, the condensing units um, that are the ACCUs. Yeah, there you go. And I can't and, remember what them. And are. they're um, and they are um, they're both. We have a gas fired yeah. in the ERV. We have a gas fired unit up there for for uh, if if the air gets too cold, um, we can add heat to it. Um, and uh, it's it's a very too many letters in my life. Um, and also, I drove all the way to Boston, and then I did. I've been all over the place today. Um, but it's it's the same system. We've been using it ever since uh, the energy issues came up maybe twenty years ago. We began 
our engineers are using the, the latest technology in that. Uh, uh -huh. So there will be gas in, in, in this field, natural gas. So my question from, um, and for anyone, that's online looking. So we're looking at sort of a revised version of the draft yeah. program um, with some additional blocks to show spatially how the spaces relate to each other. So in the in the list, um, it's about 150 square feet smaller, not square feet. Mm -hmm. But I see we've taken out the conference room and added in the medical equipment. Yeah, the medical Is that equipment what are room. There's, so some of the numbers that kind of came down were some of the support rooms. Okay. Some of them were a little bit oversized. So I brought the, that's why that number is kind of changed there. Okay. Um, but yes, we added the medical storage. Um, oh, the IT rooms. No, that's not true. Well, one issue is that we took, we, we have three classroom options, art and art and crafts classroom. Yes. And a, a the, one that's multiple less, offices. Yeah, was that? I think that was the other thing that I got from that was the director's office and the three closed offices, mm -hmm. and then uh, open space office to hold uh, for three people or so, and that's that's okay. roughly that space all okay. together. Yeah. All right. So and, and we took out the conference room because we have three classrooms, and a conference room is not used very much. And we have the game room with the billiards table. So the game room and billiards area is it has all the card playing and and um, puzzles and things. So that the conference room, it makes more sense for us to utilize one of the classrooms if you're going to have a conference. And you'll have the table there. Right. Yeah, that makes sense. So um, how deep do we want to go on this? Well, so my hope is yeah. that... Is is that another one? Oh no, these are different. Oh, okay. Yeah, sure. Yeah. 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 So my hope is that as a committee, um, we took a look at the list the first time and then asked our set of questions. Um and everyone got the written responses to those to those questions. So my hope is that we can kind of approve this. Draft approved. Draft right. approved yeah. going forward so that you guys can go on to what your next step is. Mm -hmm. Does that seem like a reasonable conclusion or are there? Not set in stone. It's not set in stone. Very flexible. I mean, do we want to try to pin down the site first? Or are we working just, well, I mean, by virtue of what the contract entails, do we want to? Because I, I mean, the you first need thing to have a to program do. for the site. Okay. We we need to know the size of the building, its footprint. So what happens is it, it's not set in stone. Okay? No, it's very flexible. But yeah. but if you if we don't know, is it a ten thousand square foot building or a fifteen thousand square foot building? And 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 there's there's a chicken and the egg deal. Yeah. Besides the site, we have to also think about budget. So once we kind of you know you know zone in on the program. Uh, knowing that everything can move around a bit, um, we can apply some numbers to that from our from our, my 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 uh, cost estimator is cost estimating things on a daily basis, so we have a much a more current number to work with. So we can start applying a number to that. And then the site, we need to know how it fits on the site, so that gives us that. And then the other issue about this too is that each site has something specific, you know, in terms of subsoil. It, information ledge about wetlands maybe moving the retaining pot that's there um so we those will affect um some of the cost as, aspects of it so they all kind of start coming together mm -hmm. but for us um knowing how this drops on the site is the, the program and once we have the program because the program also dictate a lot about parking amount of parking we need. We need probably at least 100 spaces. Um, and that is a big chunk of the site. So the site will really be dictated by the program and parking. But don't let me, please go on. I, I don't want to. So, I mean, the first, I mean, I know that we've had informal discussions regarding the billiards room and whether or not we want two tables there, whether or not they'll be fixed in place. So 
Um, which, the billiards tables don't move. That's right, which was a concern. And if you do have a billiards table, one that won't work. It has to be two. They don't work. I've done one and, and got severely criticized multiple times uh -huh. on the projects that have one table. So either you have them or you don't. So whether billiards tables go in the billiards, whether the billiards tables go in the game room or something else goes in the game room is probably further down the road. But let's say, for example, specific to air, we have a lovely billiards hall in town and we might lean towards not having one. We might, we do, not set in stone, we might. Um, is there something that at this stage you would suggest that we really consider as an alternative? The billiards? Well, to, for that space, because it's a, a fairly large square footage between the part in the game side, part of it I, I definitely love and want, but, you know, the two well, billiards table, it's, it's a decent amount of square we'll footage. We'll give you some philosophy. I, it's, again, we, we're not wedded to any particular thing. We have found, um, to give you an idea, we last maybe six projects have a pair of billiards table, and they're in, and they're kind of physically... There's a separation between where billiards is played and where card tables are. What we've found is that it's it's not gender specific. Wellesley has a very active male and female group that play billiards. Um, same with uh, Walpole. In fact, Walpole, what happened there is that they did a study, and um, the number one reason for people coming to the center is billiards added two more tables. <laughs> you know, I they did it after we did the project, but we had enough room in it. And and the gaming tables got moved around because it was open plan. They they mixed them around. Now in Lexington, Kentucky, we did three tables there, but we also were working with a forty five thousand square foot center. So we ended up with with a very large area of game of gaming cards and, and what have you, and a a media room which is kept we dealt with that for sound issues, and then the billiards area with a, with a like a bar like table, mm -hmm. and um, so it, it it it's different from each community. But what's really interesting, and then in Worcester where we learned our lesson. We designed, it was a large center there, about 30,000 square feet back in 1998. I think it was senior center of the year 2000. Uh, we we had a room where we only had enough room for one table. And it was it was very popular. What happens is that billiards is played by two people, generally. And, and it's, a, it's a socialization thing. And what happens is that you need the two tables to keep that energy level. You don't have to have them. But I don't recommend ping pong in this area. It's crazy. And we've done ping pong. I think we we have ping pong tables in North Andover and they're, they're, they're folded up. And I think we also have them in Long Meadow. They're so busy playing pickleball that they never... So I guess for us then, we in air would want to do some kind of survey of the folks be using the facility and get some relative sense of what the level of interest in various, I mean, yeah. car playing, cribbage, uh, cornhole, indoor cornhole, you know, all the rest of them. Yeah, so, yeah. That works in the multi purpose too. It's very, very good area for that. I guess um, I was just wondering if there's any other, if, if there are other senior centers you've designed that let's say they've got my spare feet is that uh, game room. 900. 900. Yeah. If they're going thousands square feet bigger than us, what are they adding? Are their individual rooms bigger or are they doing an additional room? Just to get as an option. How about that? They're about that. The only one that's probably bigger might be long though because it, it, yeah, it's it, it actually extends round down another you know i meant like let's say instead of a an eleven thousand square foot building for your clients that have built 12 13 14 000 square foot buildings 
are each of their individual rooms just a little bit bigger, but they have the same set of rooms or are any of them, are, do they have an inherently different? So like, let's say I wanted to swap out the billiard room for a different kind of room. What are other people? What, what kind of room? Other you kind. Room? Well, that's why I'm asking yeah. you guys for, I mean, multiple well, classrooms. Well, the great. idea is we have, we have basically one very large classroom that we divided into two. Mm -hmm. They use that for everything from quilting to stained glass work, painting lampshades. Mm -hmm. What happens in your community is that each community seems to have a pied piper of a particular skill that they bring in. If you go to Tweaksbury, which we weren't the architects for, but I'm familiar with it, they have a massive amount of, they have a really top notch person who teaches stained glass. So stained glass got so popular that they, they took over another classroom. So what happens is the classrooms are there to be flexible. So you have three of them. So when we call one an arts and crafts, it could be anything, but they all will have a sink and some cabinets and storage. So you can you can move things around and be very flexible. And, and, and I think, I mean, my concern is that, and again, I'm, I'm not wedded yeah. to the idea of not, Yeah. but the billiard tables decreases that flexibility because they are immovable objects and nobody's going to grab an eight-foot slate billiard table and push it to the side. Oh, yeah, we had to move them recently yeah. about four inches. <laughs> a lot of fun. So, uh, so, the, yeah. so the decision as to whether or not there are billiard tables yeah, is, is yeah. permanent, relatively right. That's what I was saying, is yeah. you know, in terms of the there's a, a already enough flexible spaces. If I were to consider a less flexible space, like the billiard room, but I didn't put billiards tables in it, what else might I put in that space? That's the question. What's the question. game where you, you sh shoot the puck down and hit the... Shut it up. Yeah, we, we put that in. Uh, against my recommendation, they put it in Walpole and they took it out a but year I mean, later. Out that thinking outside of even games, yeah. that's what I'm saying, yeah. outside yeah. of a game room concept, is there something else that larger centers who have more rooms than we're going to have. <laughs> I mean, it's finding very Just the way I use senior centers is for, you know, mostly like exercise, wine dancing, you know, and and I would see a, a flexible center as being able to accommodate two um, exercise activities mm -hmm. at the same time. Yeah, you can do that here. Yeah. yeah, that. And also understand the multi-first room also splits into two. It has a divider. Mm -hmm. And what happens often I mean, is that here. Two often the kitchen here. side, here. you, you, you so because you don't want to be using the kitchen, you don't want to see the table set up on the kitchen side for lunch. And, and then the here. other side, here. they we say it fit, fit. Really uh, really uh, They do uh, yoga in those rooms. The they do uh, uh, so you could speak line dancing. Um, they do a lot of things. What, what I would recommend that you do, and so whoever, yeah, 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 really, you don't really want to have it right here. And we have this is up here yeah, right now. Like I'm not the one that puts a billion to sit there. So it's like clients ask for it. Right. right. And, and actually, what's really interesting about billiards is there's traveling billiards teams that travel from senior center center. They came in with, they look like the hustler or the hut or whatever. But they come in with their own little uh, sticks, sticks in their boxes. And and uh, we discovered that happening when we were involved with the with the um, Wolver team. In fact, there's a newspaper article about teams that were playing. So what happens is that you may not find people right now saying, oh, I'm interested. In Wellesley, I don't think there was any ladies that were very interested in it. Now it's a 50-50 split. But what happened, they gave me a, 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 a survey at Walpole about a year, 18 months after it was done, that the number one most active area was the billiards. Now, I, uh, we, if we can get Paul Newman coming in to play billiards, I think we're going to be doing well. Well, if you get him, let him know, because I haven't seen him really. But, but I, don't, I don't want to dictate that. You know, the town of Air has a really nice billiards hall. Yeah. Probably, what, 15, 20 <laughs> tables in it? In There's a big town difference there. between having it in the senior center. Well, and that's, I think that's part of what we'll have to take to public in, but yeah. I don't want to believe yeah. that. No, but, but, but it's a really good point. If there was an, an attractive alternative, if you said, oh, if you're thinking maybe about not doing that, then 
maybe more consider targeted. just more targeted. Well, if, yeah. like in, in Long Middle, when we were, one of the really difficult program elements was that they had a very strong bridge group. They wanted a room where 50 people could play bridge. And we're already at 30,000 square feet. We have maxed out almost all our programs. He said, well, and they also wanted a gift shop, which was always killed. The gift shops have never done well. They do well in the old centers. They don't do well in the new centers. And it's a huge problem. Right. I won't get into that. Yeah. Um, but what happened in, in um, Long Meadow is that they ended up, we didn't give them a, a dedicated bridge room. It was going to be 50 people. It was a really big room. So what we did is that we have we have a the double classroom that's called out there. One end of the classroom has a residential type teaching kitchen in it. And that whole thing sets up for because it's so large. We set that up for bridge. And by the way, the number of bridge people that come to play is about 25 to 50. So we would have spent a lot of money on a very big space. So they ended up using I, I've been there when they had the bridge set up. A very flexible group, and that's the whole idea of those three classrooms. They don't really have a label, we call one arts and crafts, so, so you know you have it. And the flooring in those is, is a linoleum type flooring that's cleanable. But in the, in the one where the bridge is played, because they have a number of classrooms, that one has carpeting. If I could just, yeah, go ahead, maybe um, 600 square foot kitchen. Mm -hmm. Look, how many meals you able to? Depends on the equipment. Yeah. I, I can, when I was in the Army, we could put out 2,000 meals out of a tent <laughs> with, four, with four burners. I mean, it's, it so, depends so on the equipment that you have. With a 600 square foot kitchen properly equipped, I could probably do 1,000, 1,500 meals. So that's going to be more than enough for it. It's, well, the size of the kitchen isn't dictated by what you're producing. It's dictated by... The board of health yes. you have to have a sink you have to have a pot sink you have to have a dishwasher you have to have so 600 square foot commercial kitchen would be sufficient to serve 200 200 250 yeah we, we actually depending on the equipment yeah. if you had the right equipment you could do four five hundred right i think he's got hours here at 600 so Yes. Yeah. So I guess the yeah. question you're know, asking is, is it too much square footage, or are you yeah, I mean, trying to get some sense of is six hundred sufficient? If it's you know, if you can save a hundred square feet there and cut down to fifteen hundred mills, you know, do you want to put that hundred square feet somewhere else? Those kinds of things. Well, there's a pantry involved in that too. There's a lot of food storage, um, and it, and also you can help me since you're the food guy down there. Are we? Are we preparing our your every day or every other day meals on site or are you um, because it really makes a difference you have to have, if you're doing a lot you're doing all your meals from scratch on site um, you really need a walk in Katie and I and um, and we've done lots of kitchens like that but they're 600 plus um, the kitchen in um, uh, uh, Wilbraham is large. Uh, that's almost a, a 3,000 square foot ultra purpose room. And um, I think that kitchen could have been a little bit smaller. We, we were, our clients often have some input in the kitchen, either smaller or bigger. But what you're saying here is the health department says three pot sinks, a Prep sink for for, uh, for for vegetables, vegetables, etc. Um, we we prefer the bulk counter dishwasher. It goes through a, a minute and a half or two minutes each time. Um, slides along, and we have a, a indoor for for dirty and an outdoor for clean. So we split the kitchen so that dirty is over here, things over there. Um, the board of health, and then it's there's a lot of other board of health things that you do. And you have the hood over the, over the, and a lot of these centers, almost everybody wants warming ovens, and um, and we stack those. And in fact, both people are upset we only do one more. And that the equipment's not cheap either; it's probably eighty or ninety thousand. 
Question. Uh, you're looking for this committee to, to say okay to this program tonight. That's your goal. Draft. Well, draft. draft program, but I so if people are not comfortable with it, obviously no. But if if people aren't comfortable with it, I'd want to know what the steps are that we need to take to, take to get comfortable with it. My concern is that. This do we would we consider this to be like an optimum oh, right now. So we can these out all basically the maximum size rooms that we would need. We would not be looking to make any of these any bigger. No, I don't think any of these are undersized. A couple might be a little bit smaller. Which one? Right, well, we have upstairs bathrooms with stall and yeah, we can get small. If this is done right, we can get away with single use user bathrooms on the second floor on the second floor to meet the code. We we did that in, in Wilbraham and I, I believe we could get away a little bit smaller. Not the ADA one with the shower, but there'd be a, a male, female individual youth bathroom on each uh, on the second floor, whereas the larger bathroom. So if you'd like to have the bathrooms without doors, we need more space for that. But like you see at the airport. Yeah. If you go to Long Meadow, we have it set up that many, but it, it uses a lot more space. We also, I think in, uh, in Wilbraham, we have the uh, the wave access for people who need to get into the bathroom. Yeah. Yeah. So there's a little bit of flexibility there. They come down. And, and like like if you're running an office, you know, I always like to have fresh flowers every week, but then things get a little tight. Drop off the fresh flowers. Um, the one thing, there's some flexibility with storage, but I can assure you, we can never have enough storage. And, and we have that in early good size room for medical. Um, what they did in Wilbraham is they combined some of the multi-purpose room storage with medical equipment. And they have access to the medical equipment. Um, my preference for medical equipment is to be associated with the service entrance um, rather than somewhere in the middle of the building, only because you know I'm coming in for extended toilet. I don't want to see me carrying it out. Right. Yeah. 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 What we don't have on here is that room that we were thinking about adding for the Disabilities Commission for their equipment well, lending program. It is on there. Actually, that's, that's, yeah, it's there. One down there. Sorry. Med the medical yeah, All right. All it was okay. not. You're calling in medical storage. Yeah. Yeah. It was not on the original. We, when, when we had the discussion, we upgraded this. Okay. This is black. Well, yeah. I think I think medical storage. I think. Uh, I don't think. And like stroll walkers and chairs and things like that. I was thinking more like oxygen. equipment, pumps, oxygen tanks. No, we're not. We're not going to get into that. Old yeah. number eight yeah. on the list doesn't appear to be here. Right, that was taken out. What was that? The card and pump. Yeah, that was. Yes, yeah. We took that. Yeah. Out. So that came okay. out right. because and we don't we really need that. And then the, the right. equipment loaning medical okay. equipment, right. medical storage room. It's equipment. a pretty good size room. It's like ten by twenty five. So yep. getting back to the kitchen, are we going to do a walk-in freezer and a walk-in refrigerator too? So two. You only need one. You can you can if you set we, it up we, right. The freezer is in the back. The the freezer, the the freezer, the freezer, the freezer is a smaller unit in the back. Okay. If we're going to do that, six hundred square feet might be a little on the small side. Again, what, what, well, what I'm about? thinking you can put it outside the outside and attach it to the building. You know what? Well, I found that. That's what I had at the prison. We had a prison. Yeah, it's a good place to prison. We had it. works well there. Concrete slab, and we went out. It had yeah. been up for 15 years. It's never been a problem. Yeah, yeah. Is, my is, that prison? Is, there, is there a break point where you go from, uh, I saw a unit, we went to Groton the other day. I saw a unit, which I'm not wow. I'm here on kitchen equipment, but I have built some commercial kitchens. And they did not have a walk-in over there. But they had a unit which I'd never seen before, which was a three section unit. It was a freezer, refrigerator, yeah. and the third section was what was the third section? Three yeah. section. But it didn't need to have didn't need to have a condenser. So the region. 
just a yeah, but it's just regular it's research. Research. But it was a big research. Was it not a walk-in? Walk no, it's a good shot. If you're doing, if you're, if you're prepping food and you're maintaining food on site, outside. Outside. it needs to be refrigerated. And you're doing a lot of soil. We do reach into what he's describing. We do. If you go to whatever man has, we have two doubles in a freezer. Yeah. And they're just underneath it, and they mean the health code. Oh. Health code requires all kinds of little gates. Well, okay. mm -hmm. yeah. So yeah. the yeah. only other commercial kitchen I have experience with in a senior center setting had a residential fridge freezer combo, a reach-in freezer, and a reach-in refrigerator, and that required the kitchen manager to go to the grocery store or go to the food supplier. Awesome. every other day every third day because you really can't buy the commodities in any bulk sure. and you have to kind of get what you're going to need for the next meal yeah. too which if you've got someone on staff with lots of hours and likes to do that great but then you're much more subject to what the that day's pricing is, is as that well the one so. in andover yeah, in that's that's the one one in long Townsend, yeah. yeah there's one in long Meadow. It's a walk-in unit with a freezer in the back. You know, freezer smaller. Right. When we saw in Andover, they had two freezers. I mean, I don't know if you remember, they had two freezers. Andover. North Andover. North Andover. No. No, no, Andover. Uh, no, North Andover. North yeah. Andover. Yeah, those are two region units. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And a free yeah. there's a freezer in the pantry. They're not cooking their own food there though, are they? No, they're mostly they're no, they weren't. They no, very limited. They the the uh, a lot of these centers work with the school department. Yeah, yeah. And the school department supplies. Okay. And they're now, if you go to Holyoke or you go to um, Long Meadow, they both have walk-ins. So, so just to clarify, so for our purposes, it's the sense that in order to have the kind of food service that you would envision the town of air kind of meeting well the needs of the people who are coming here, et cetera, et cetera, that a commercial kitchen with a walk-in freezer would best allow you to refrigerate. Yeah, well, best allow you to do that. I mean, I think that's going to gonna come down to the budget. Money. I mean, if it was in an ideal world, should you have that? I think you could make it work with <laughs> two of each for a region. Okay. I mean, I'm I'm not, we have I'll. I'll defer to, yeah, to Dave double. on that, but I, I think double. that's going to come down to budget, honestly. I'm going to pose a result or a conclusion that we settle on the 600 square feet, mm -hmm. but we don't know what the, the layout is going to be at this point. So mm -hmm. let's say we only need 400 square feet for equipment at the end of the day because we decide we're going to have meals brought in or whatever. But mm -hmm. let's use the 600 square feet as a baseline okay. and then modify the design as we go along. So we ended up with a 10 by 12 storage room instead of a six, you know, a 500 foot kitchen with a 10 by 12 storage in the kitchen. Maybe we still use the 600 feet. Just settle on 600. Let's so, uh, what's the difference in square footage between the walk in and the reach in? I don't know. Oh, <laughs> well, usually when we do the walk in, they still have a reach in. Oh, you have to. Because otherwise, everybody's going over to the walk in and trying to get stuff out of it. Whereas you might have your current stuff in the reach in. But to give you an idea on what we have, we have two big double reach ins. Normally, I think in long middle, we have one reach in. I, you know, I, I don't know anything about yeah. this this area. <laughs> Maybe you can tell by the question. Uh, but it, it, uh, I guess you're not addressing what I'm, my, my question is. Well, is well, is there a difference in, in square footage that we need yes. between having a walk in? And yes. a, a region, and what is that difference? Depends how big your walk-in is. If you give you an idea, the walk-in in, in uh, long middle is, I think, probably about six by eight with a yeah, with a, maybe a three by the same width, six feet freezer. So it's they're modular. You buy, you tell them what size you want, and they call it ten and put it together. And um, so you go into the freezer, the refrigerator, you can kind of walk around your shelf and everything. Then there's another door that takes you to the freezer, which is kept below freezing. <laughs> and it's cold. That, you don't go in very often. That's really for the longer term things because you have to come in. Um, 
And to give you an idea, this this multi-purpose room is about the same size as lawn metals multi-purpose. And the reason why long these two are about the same size is because lawn metal has an eleven thousand square foot gym or bigger events. So but this multi-purpose room uh, is a little bit smaller than Wilmer's, which is about that's why I have a bigger kitchen there too. Uh, okay, how many people you think? I mean, you have you fed in the last year or so on a big event, and how many people do you anticipate with this once we get this bill that you think are going to come? So right now, I'm kind of limited by my existing space here, but we see between eighteen and twenty four daily in this space right here. Then when we have something like a free lunch, maybe every other month or so, we can spill over into this room. Thanksgiving, Christmas, Mother's Day, we're at 45 to 55. Um, so then if you look at anywhere between some senior centers tell me they have a 20 to 30% growth. Some of them say they've had up to 60% in usage um, in a new center. So I mean, I think it's reasonable to say that we would seat a hundred for four, five, six times a year, but on a daily yeah. daily basis, probably thirty-five. So clear path for vets on Devons. They serve every Thursday. They have to go to two meals, two seatings because they have not, don't have enough park. So we we're just throwing some numbers. You think said a hundred a hundred car parking lot. Okay, yeah. is that going to be enough? They don't have enough parking up there. But they serve about 125 people every Thursday. Yeah. It may be some a little more, maybe a little less. So, and they have a galley kitchen. Right. They don't have a big open building. They've got a galley kitchen. Right. And it's perfectly set up. I mean, it's yeah. awesome. That was very designed. Um, so at least for the sake of seniors and parking, parking spots, of course, have to be a little bit bigger than they are someplace else. But just at the fireman's cookout, we had... 48, yeah, 48 that came to the fireman's book out on Friday, and we had 14 people come via the van. So it's not a one-to-one -one ratio of if this meal, uh, this multi-purpose room seats 150, we won't have 150 cups for yep. it, um, yep. because there will be, you know, people that are coming on the van. And lots of people come together, mm -hmm. a spouse or a friend. Mm -hmm. um, our experience is when we built Duxbury, we had a parking lot for 70. Um, within a year, we doubled the size of the to 140. So it just so so for the just to circle back to the kitchen. Yeah. So we'll leave it at 600 square feet. The question that we'll walk in yeah. freezer or two mm -hmm. remains to be determined. Um, and kind of just as a general guideline, mm -hmm. the upper limit for the large meals is probably 100, maybe 100. I, you know, just from what I've observed, I anticipate pretty good turnout for those. Mm -hmm. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if we got to 100, 125. I would think that we can do it more and more frequently. And yeah. we have realized the food is good. It more than more double. More people will show up. It's designed for, what, 150? Is that what this version has? So, yeah. 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 For sit down meals, it's for you can sit down for a lecture is two hundred plus. Yeah. Yeah, for a sit down is one hundred fifty a table. Yeah. And if you don't, by the way, we're not doing it for today. Right, right. No, you know, agreed. Ten years from now, when it's really ripping. So right. what I'm saying is, I think even <clears throat> even the first year it's open, I think we'll be hitting that one hundred, no yeah. problem. And then sure. so fifty is, I think, a, a good spot. So on the fitness room. Because we've seen a number of them, and I know that some folks, that some of the directors I've spoken with, the fitness room ends up being too small just because they were oversubscribed and the fitness classes are very popular. Um, in, in terms of having equipment in there versus having an open space for yoga and dancing and kind of exercise. Yeah, we do the yoga outside of the equipment. It's your careful, all like purpose. Now, in our large centers, we've done full wood floor exercise, dance, and yoga, and meditation. But that's a big room. We don't have that here, but we do have a multi purpose room. 
When, but when you say fitness here, you're you're talking about a rule of equipment. Equipment, weight, weight, resistance, and um, and treadmills uh, and you know aerobic. And 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 although we're not in the equipment here, we usually recommend the pneumatic system. You don't have to remember what weight you do. You just tell us what you do. And Kaiser makes sense. But that room, right now, fitness is just getting rolling in Wilbur. It was a slow start. As people get comfortable and realize that fitness training and weight training and resistance is really important. Mm -hmm. So I noticed in the May 15th version, um, we had 420 square feet. And you guys had said even at that last meeting that that might be a little small, but now we've gone to 800 square feet. Yeah. So that's like, what we did. Again, I see even the one to one swap for from the conference room to the medical equipment room. Where did those 400 square feet come from if we're basically the same? It was too small before. It, no, it, I know, but where did you take it. it out of it? I guess it's like, yeah, this, that's the May 15th version. I just think they compare the two next to each other. It's like, uh, I think it was because my administration, we added, it might have been broken down. Two more offices in administration, but also I think it's more ahead of more thousand storage. feet. Okay, so you made administration smaller? Yeah, so, well, because I broke everything, started breaking everything down. I think 750 was a little bit too much. Yeah, I remember. Um, let me see what else. There might be a few. Yeah. So it yeah, says 750 now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I guess I'm just wondering where the extra. Where we have. We, we, oh, the, the, group, the group. One thing is the group toilets went from 1,100 to 70, 750. Okay, so that's where it went. So the that bathrooms was, got much The bathrooms smaller. also got smaller. Gotcha. Okay. And, and, and in fact, you can, I think, on the second floor, gain another 150 square feet. I hate the sound of scientists, but usually women go to bathroom in pairs. <laughs> well, we use. I hate this. It's yeah, sorry, so I wouldn't, if we were going to hit the bathrooms, I wouldn't leave the women's bathroom with two stalls and maybe make the it's one. It's required by room. law. We have to have double the ladies' toilets versus the men's. The, mm -hmm. the urinal makes up a lot for that. Yes. The ladies get a lot more toilets. Um, Katie, can I ask, in terms of the fitness, do you have any sense at all of the kind of equipment that might be used frequently or not? Or in terms I of I have to reach back into the depths of my of my knowledge. I used to help design those for retirement communities way back in the day, like 20 years ago. Um, but yeah, there's I'm sure, I'm sure. So I mean I, I think some of your basic equipment. Treadmills, okay. recumbent bikes. The life cycle allows you to pull off the seat and pull off the wheelchair. Yeah, I'm just wondering how many, like, how many treadmills, exercise cycles, uh, recumbent bicycles. Are you anticipating in that? Yeah, I mean, that is. We haven't laid it out yet. But it'd be very similar to Wilbur. Um, we have. We've been there. Mm -hmm. and, and the, I mean. I, we have an expert that does that with us. He, he does these facilities. I mean, that's another thing, I think, getting some sense of what the public here would want to see in the room and how much use it would get. Um, I mean, I've seen, again, I've seen some that are very well, you know, the, the thought was the fitness room just wasn't big enough for everything that they're trying to offer. Others feels like the fitness room has some stuff in it but it's not really being used frequently. Well, what you're going to find out, one thing, whatever you think is going to work often gets changes over time. But what we find is treadmills are not, treadmills are useful. They're somewhat dangerous for some elderly. They, we have to be careful about them. The recumbent bikes are really very popular. Um, uh, weight, uh, you know, resistant weight training is really important, um, especially if you're a lot of exercise. Um, a lot of it, what what is happening? I know it happens in um, in uh, Long Meadow. We have a, a they have a person there who works with people with, with PT issues, uh, or 
you know, they recommend it because your shoulders, you got to do something. They work it, they're professional. And I think in one place, the why is very well. In fact, the why was the one that picked out all the equipment, I think, for a well, uh, for a home. And it's run by the why. And they staff it. One of the things we ran into there, which was problematic, was that the Y wanted to use it after hours, which complicated me a little bit. But those are, there's a lot of things. And as this whole thing progresses, I think all of us will, will begin drilling down on it, really how all the input we work out. I, I know that in fitness, um, sometimes you start out slowly, sometimes you go fill up quickly. But fitness has become a really, really important item. Forty years ago, we didn't nobody even discussed fitness in the senior center. It wasn't even on the horizon. Line dancing. There today, one of the first things that people ask about senior centers. So those are things and I think you're right. I, I think once it catches on, sometimes they, they feel a little small. But I think we're at a pretty good size right here. Let's check it against Wilbraham. I'm pretty sure that's Wilbraham. Wilbraham was a pretty good size exercise. Yeah. So so they they have yeah. Yes. Like yeah. Yeah. They had eight machines. Yes. Well, yeah. yeah. I have the I have the picture. I took the pictures while I was there. That one yeah. had three treadmills, three ellipticals. It's only like one person. Two recumbent bikes. Yeah, it and has it just open. It takes a while. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, so you can't people. open it with full programming. It's really hard to get all of that all lined up to start on day one. We're gonna have to roll it out. Only a hotel. So, so, so for our purposes, the fitness, what's, what we're referring to here is the fitness room. Is it would correct? have would have the would have the treadmills, the equipment yeah. that resistance, the the yoga, the stretching, the line dancing, that all those things would occur in the multi-purpose room, perhaps, or in the classroom divided. Yeah. Okay. So the question becomes, how many pieces of equipment do we think we'll need to fill up? Yeah, okay. I mean, we'll give you that. We'll work with you, and then we'll we can sort it out as we lay it out for you. Yeah. So that's four twenty, right? Is that the same number? Is it, is no, they, they doubled it. So yeah, that's why I was asking why you wanted to know where it was came from. And there was a group toilets that came down. Yeah, we stole it from twenty by twenty. Yeah. Right now it's twenty eight by twenty or something like that. Well, if we could do um, walking. As Katie wishes, that we don't need treadmill. I mean, you know. Well, you do need treadmill. But I, I, I also think that, I mean, the treadmills I've been on have been pretty hazardous. They, 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 I don't know. They've gotten the treadmills today. I, I've been on. You, you, you kind of think about something and you're off the back side of it. Very dangerous. The new ones now have a lot more railing systems around them. Um, they have you can actually have a thing hooked to your belt if you slide down too far down the back. The shelf still oh. There's a lot of safety oh, features. Good. Okay. Well, the lawyers have helped. <laughs> yeah, can't, lawyers can't can. fix it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, well, that's. Yeah. Yeah. Talking about open. Yeah, I am an old person now. I turned sixty. That makes me old. Well, you're not nearly old. <laughs> no, you're not. Old. You're not an old, oh. enough, old enough to make these decisions. <laughs> not old enough to make the mistakes. But I'm old enough to make the mistakes. Yeah, my kids so let me the treadmill and ended up underneath it. But you should I, also absorb this. You know, I'd love to get go back. You know, feed Katie with your thoughts. Katie can send it into us. We'll look at it. We'll make our comments on it. And I I know that I've harped on this a lot. And some people maybe have already done this. I really think you should go see a couple of centers like Ludlow and Wilmerham and, and Longman are kind of nearish by. Um, Ludlow and Longman are almost right next to each other. So you can kill two there in one big stone. Um, and they're both good to see because they're both brand new. Um, and they're both, I think, Philosophically, quite different. You may like some stuff in one and some not the other. 
then uh, Wilbraham is literally just open and they're just getting going. <clears throat> so, well, we went to Wilbraham. Yeah. Did you guys go twice or once? I went to Wilbraham once. I went to North Andover twice. So, um, in terms of it, so are we through with the fitness? And a, I, a, this a is up to. Um, the la like the lounge library you have at 500 square feet. How many people do you envision that being kind of suitable for? Anywhere between you know, 10 to 15, maybe. Yeah. We, it's usually broken yeah. in two parts. What happens with the way our philosophy, if you will, um, we come into the mall, to the reception area. Generally, the cafe area is there. It's noisy, lots of energy. And then there's there's movement without a hallway, moves into an area that's a little bit farther away and quieter. And we, we often have a double-sided fireplace with books on one side, seating on one side. It's a little noisier. And then around that fireplace is a much more quieter space where I know in, in the polio, there's a knitting group that meets every morning to knit in that area. Uh, there's a, a little book group. Uh, so there's it, it goes from noisy, not so noisy, to quiet. And for a lot of elders, quiet is important because we often can't you get a lot of high frequency background noise. It, it's hard to hear. So when you're talking to a friend, you end up shouting. When you get in the library or in the in, 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 in between space, it's it's a quieter to carry on. So that's kind of the idea of that. And it's very similar to um, Wilbraham, um, very similar to uh, Longmeadow, and the same with North Andover. No, I, I, I had a clear confusion about the North Andover one. So. And if you went to Wellesley, we have a single fireplace in the with, a, with a big divider that, that separates at that place the cafes on that side, libraries. But that's the configuration of the site too. That's why the site is really important. How big is that place in Wellesley? How big is that? It's um well, we can only park 54 cars. <laughs> it Wellesley, we had to buy another lot for 1.2 million to get enough cars in there. Um that Wellesley is about 14,000 square feet. And it's tight. I mean, it's parking is is a disaster, but it's what they have. We often have to work. You go to, we actually, when we did North Andover, they had one lot that was being given to them by a developer. And for some reason, they thought they could get 80 or 90 cars in a 15,000 square foot senior center on this little tiny lot. We had to buy the next lot over. When I say we, <laughs> taxpayers had to buy. But actually, in reality, the developer who is a major developer who lives in town, used to be on the planning board. I think he paid that lot too. By the time they got down, it was a million four for the two lots. We tore down both houses that were on it and built a new center. It was the most difficult thing was contractors. I thought it was the architects still the most difficult. Oh, they're as, oh, excuse me, they're jerks. <laughs> <laughs> So Sorry. What, is, what is the sense of the community? Let's do it. Come on, let's make a decision. Do yeah, I, I mean. Well, it's not the end of the world. I mean, if you feel like you've got a couple of comments down the road, it's nothing but a line on a piece of paper. It's not set. What's really going to help you guys is the budget. We'll work up what, if we work with this, or we adjust it slightly, we'll apply a budget to this early on. Reality sets in pretty quick, yep. and and um, and, the, and the budget will be both. It will it will include both hard construction costs and related soft costs. Bidding it, um, we bid now online, so a lot cheaper. In the old days, it used to cost it fifteen twenty thousand dollars to the job. Now we do it electronically, and it's probably okay. three or four thousand. Do, do you have? Um... <laughs> Oh, the IT room. Okay. Yeah, it's going to be in. It's, so the wiring, up in the attic space. so the wiring closet, those kinds of things would be up in the attic. Yeah, because it's free space. Mm -hmm. Free. Nothing's free. No, I know that. <laughs> I've been it's trying to explain that to people. <laughs> yeah, it's. It, and by the way, 
we have a lot of what we call in the attic, the upper level there, we have, um, what do we call it? All the, you know, ceiling tiles or we have- Oh, the, the attic stock. Yeah, attic stock. We put all the attic stock up there, which is roofing, bricks, you know, everything. We have extra of everything. We all the time. Ten percent, five percent. Yeah, about five percent. It, it actually, it's often sometimes a lot's left over. Mm -hmm. That's good, but hopefully, it, it's you know like we have like maybe four cases of ceiling tiles. Uh, we'll have a fair amount of linoleum. And we have a, yeah, and the seamless tile flooring. The patio bricks, they're, they're, we recommend using these recycled tire bricks, mm -hmm. which are lovely. soft. Did you see that? We have those up here. And oh, this trap is, is assuming a two story structure? Yeah. That reduces our footprint considerably. In fact, all the sites we've looked at, we really don't want to be much bigger than 10,000 square feet because of parking and circulation and patio outdoor. And, you know, actually, I think both the um, one over by Devons and the um, Harvard Groton one both have really interesting surrounding spaces. People like walking, you know, we should have some kind of access to the playing fields up above because it's like walking the golf course. You need to walk the perimeter of those. In fact, I know a lot of schools around us. Um, in the evenings and on the weekend, there's people walking the track all the time. And um, and the nice, nice thing is you can watch the games, too. I, I like the school. So we'll look at... So we have a square footage on the structure. Mm -hmm. Then we will choose a site. You will tell us how to configure the building on the site. Yes. And then the issue around landscaping, patios, rear entrances. We'll have that all included in that. That will occur kind of as the last, later in the process. Well, it starts showing up right away. Orientation is really important, north, south, east, west. Um, although it sounds, we have to like to have the patio and outdoor spaces as much as possible on the south side, because we know we're in right, the but so we have to do all that. We figured that all out. But am, am I incorrect in saying that uh, in terms of your work, you do the landscape architecture? Yeah, you do it all. That's all part of that. Right? Well, well, it is It is in the final it's design. Contract. It's not this contract, but it's in the, in the long term contract. We no, will show is, you. It will be. Yeah. Not in this contract. No, no, I understand. All right. Well, this contract, we're going to lay out your parking. Right. We're going to have, you know, the islands in the parking. We'll have around the center that's going to be planted. We're just not picking up planting, yeah, but yeah, we'll yeah. give out those spaces. And then also the patio is really important. And what we what we discovered in our last maybe four projects is that we've discovered it's very popular when we have the cafe associated right away with the reception area with an access out to an outdoor sitting area. Uh, people will often come grab a cup of coffee and go out and sit down with a friend outside in a shaded area. Or they'll if it's not in weather, they'll be in the cafe area before an event. If some people just come and say, I'll meet you for coffee before I go somewhere else. So it really becomes a social drop in around food. So um, are, are we ready to motion Accept this as a, a draft. Does anybody else need more? If if someone needs more time, we can certainly take more time. But if everybody is comfortable with this as as a the draft, not that in stone, but the draft that they can move forward with, then I think we should make a motion. So when we approve the draft um, sizes and whatnot, you're going to turn that into the concept plan. Yes. Yeah. Slow plan. And yeah. And all the colors will match up, and uh, eventually. It may not in our may not be in our contract, but we will probably do some renderings for you mm -hmm. and and um, 
some interior looks because today now we work in Revit. And anything that we, any plan we do is, is a model. Mm -hmm. It's three dimensional. In the old days, it was one, two dimension. You did another two dimension, then you made it look. This grows up as one entity. When AIs finally arrive, I'm going to push a button. <laughs> and not to it. That means we won't need you anymore. Though. I know. No, I get paid more because I know how to do it. <laughs> um, but what what Dan and uh, and I will do is is lay this thing out, and it'll bring us to the sites next, right? Because the sites, yeah, exactly really the sites are really the next thing I want to yeah. get to. So, what? Talking more about the sites is the second most the second thing on our agenda. Just one bit more. Just clarify again. Um, when you're bidding the project, we're bidding on the gross square footage. Yeah. No, we're not including the gross square footage in the attic. No. Um, it's all part of the space. In number. the in this the calculations from the net to the gross are basically going to be hallways and open some open spots that doors could identify. I mean, the walls to the wall. Yeah. That yeah. kind of stuff. Yeah. You know, basically. You know, some chasing. Chasing. It, it, that that net to gross. We'll drop down to around 12 or 14 percent as we tighten up the plan. Okay. And what it'll do is it'll give you more space that you use as program and administration and storage and then wandering down hallways. We've done a lot of analysis of really relatively new centers, which have a lot of um, hallways. And hallways can use up 24 percent of the building, and you're paying six, seven hundred dollars square foot for that. It doesn't make sense. So our our plans tend to be a lot more open. Thank you. Is that a motion? So I move that we uh, accept um, this draft plan as presented tonight by Kat Lennon's architecture as um, the programming, the direction, or whatever. The initial draft. The initial draft. The layout. Yeah. Initial layout of our new senior center. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Chair sure says aye. I think that's everybody. Anybody opposed? No. All right. Test. Oh, I was going to be. Oh. <laughs> you don't get to vote, though. No, I know. <laughs> Wonderful. All right. we'll, leave, we'll leave these with you. All right. So, next is the discussion of. The site and the site rankings. Yeah, Thank you to everybody who filled those out and Dennis for adding yours um, this evening. Did everybody have a chance to look over? And I I re included the um, criteria in your packet tonight. These are all the sites. This is the the three sites. So oh, yeah. So there's one for each one, one for each site. And then will you send me an electronic copy of each of those so I can post them? Do you want to? I sent you an email of the PDFs. Are they small enough? I sent this to you, so you should be able to just forward over to. Okay. I just want to get them posted for the yeah. sake of the couple. I don't do it right now. It won't happen. So. Oh, okay. okay. So there's three three sets on each side for the three different sites. <laughs> That's the approximate where so the play field, if you're looking at it, this is where the play field is. Right. Yeah, I'm just surrounding the play field. Is it, if you don't show that if you show that to somebody else other than this group, it's gonna be pretty confusing. Yeah. It's a property line street. That's our job. <laughs> Make it complicated so you can answer it. Absolutely. Okay. The approximate is this area. Where do work? This right now is the play field. And this pool is over here. Okay. And this is 
kind of where we remember well, that's that's where that, that exists in the term yeah. 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 in red across yeah. the dump and right yeah. yeah. that's part of that so that's what we're that's what we're proposing right now this strip yeah. Down, yeah. Yeah. so not, what I, not the parking lot where the yes. constant where you're packed to go to the uh, yeah. The battle continues. On, on GIS, it's right on the railroad tracks. It splits. Okay, so where are we in here? So, um, the, if you're out going down the, the Bishop, Bishop, Bishop or person, that yeah. gate entrance by the brown oh, pile is right here. It's gated, so this is currently yep. it's kind of a trail. This is where that goes side with the brush for the trail. So, so our yeah. street is here. Yeah, so they drive down the street. Yeah. 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 A little bit farther. Yeah. You get your triangle shape. Yeah. 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 Uh, a lot there. And then that's a little concept. Okay. Oh, thank you. So these, oh, so the areas where this, where these. This is the. So potentially the possible area for parking. So these are not set of stone. This is just going to. A rough yeah, estimate yeah. of a ten thousand square foot size on it. Yeah, yes, that's okay. the footprint for so ten thousand. Yeah, it might be. It might be ninety five stories. We aware of the fact that it's two stories. I know it's going to be one. Two seems to be the so uh, the, the brush dump would be like if you're at the gate, that's what this little is on here. Actually, the gate on the street. The on the street. Yeah, the yeah, 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 yeah. 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 footprint. Yeah, yeah. 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 they're also, envisioning moving. You got this twice the roof. Yeah. We over this way. Yeah. Twice the foundation. Twice the slab. Yeah. And and um, if you're only if you're ten thousand or smaller, definitely make them but if I you're over 10,000, we tend to want to go. And for I seniors, <laughs> well, if walking out there, it's a big part of the size. So. Hilly. So I think the big fall is over there. Yeah, yeah. and this one well, for sure. This one is not Do you know? Yeah. Correct. Yeah. yeah. If you saw the Wendy and Brook Street heading to yeah. the Yeah. Yeah. It's expensive. So you get to the deep end of the land. Okay. The nearest sewer is over in Washington. Is that handle that? No, on the right. There's only a home station down here. Then on the side, can we decide what there's a lap? Whether it would take us. Yeah. Because the pumping would be much. To do a septic there, so have you, there's so water we, across the street. Two separate there's conversations this, going on here. Can we, we, one have conversation? the uh, yeah. so oh, we have one conversation. So we have one conversation because they're over here talking about you know, one thing, and you guys are talking about something else. So they have like we should have both of them, but could we have one just? Okay, man. Mm -hmm. right. Go ahead. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean that. I had to lead it. I just meant. <laughs> You were talking about utilities, which is very important. Oh, yes. So, yes. Can you... so the... well, which on which side are we talking about? Well, to... we not... well, the ratings for a <laughs> So, do, yeah. yeah. So, well, you all rated. So, it seemed just to kind of summarize where my thinking is. Just looking at these ratings, I think everybody rated Bishop Road one. Everybody, not everybody, but the preponderance of people, yes. Well, I got everybody. So, somebody got me. I get everybody in there. I got everybody. I got everybody, I get everybody in one. Yeah. Maybe you. I thought it. No, because Carolyn's were, Carolyn used the different, the different form. So you had. Oh. You had. Brooks. Brooks oh, I didn't realize that that was a different form. Carolyn had the first form. Yeah. So. You had Brook Street, the smaller one here, as your number one rated. Oh, I didn't. Uh, yeah. Sorry. Okay. Whatever. Sorry. Oh, no, I didn't mean, yeah. Oh, I didn't realize that. I'm sorry. There was just that one that was uh, on the outlier. Yeah. <laughs> did you not have to do it? It was a great one. Well, it doesn't matter. Oh, <laughs> and, <laughs> yeah. Okay, and so there was some concern street, about street, street, street specifically street. that made it not viable. Well, so everybody had the chance to rate it. 
um, Bishop Road did come out as the highest rated, followed by the school site, followed by Brook Street. And it was unanimous in that order, aside from Carolyn, who yours were close, but you had yours the opposite way with your number one and your number two choice. They were only one point apart. So, yeah. Um, so I guess the, the thing I'd like to do tonight is to have a little bit more of an in-depth discussion about the factors involved with each one of those and then see if we're interested in eliminating one of these this evening. Dan, do you want to talk a little bit about those or, or, or this yeah. Dan or that Dan, whoever wants to? Let, let Dan talk. He, he, he's been digging I've been, the dirt. I've been hiding over here. No. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I, yeah, I went through this. You want me to just talk about my scores? And, sure. Which, yeah, I mean, location, image, 115 Washington Street. I had that, you know, a little higher. That's a, a good location near the schools um, on two collector roads, pretty much right in Harvard, Washington Street. Bishop's a little off the beaten path. I didn't put it all the way to negative three. It's, you know, it's actually a good spot being near the Nashua River. And Brook Street, I just kind of kept that in the middle as a zero. It's sort of near downtown, right next to DPW, next to some residents. So I didn't have any anything there. Um, lot area expansion potential. I think, you know, 115 Washington Street probably had the most potential. Bishop Road, you get the brush dump and you get the triangle parcel next to it and Brook Street's already tight. Ownership, obviously, uh, Bishop and Brook Street, I had highest. 115 Washington, there's obviously the hurdles there with the uh, that being in the school committee's control. Existing structures, um, I left those off. All of them I put at zeros. <laughs> there's really no structures there. Hazardous materials, I put that all at zeros. You know, there's nothing to our knowledge. Um, so I kind of kept those even. Access and traffic, I had 115 Washington as the the highest rank there and Bishop slightly below it with Brook Street as a, as the lowest. Um, uh, utilities, 115 Washington, pretty high, but there's no sewer. Otherwise, you pretty much have every utility you need. Bishop, obviously, not good in that category. And um, and 25 Brook Street has every utility we need. And actually, they're probably in the way. <laughs> um, uh, topography. Uh, 115 Washington, I left it at zero. That you know, some slope issues there. Um, Bishop, I, I had that highly rated. It's a pretty good site and for moving soils around. Uh, 25 Brook, I had that pretty low. You know, it's got that big outcrop of ledge there, um, which would be a lot to deal with. Hydrology, um, I did have, let's see, Bishop as the highest there. I think that kind of tied in with geology soils. It, it had kind of the best soils. Um, there's no FEMA flood issues. You know, Bishop uh, or, um, uh, no, 25 Brook Street, it's it's may, maybe in the 500-year flood area. It's close. Um, and the other ones were okay. Let's see, geology soils. So that kind of goes back to, to the ledge. So 115 Washington and Brook Street, I, I gave worse than Bishop. Views and orientation. <clears throat> um, I gave 115 Washington and Bishop. I scored them the same as a one, but 25 Brook Street, I, I put that down a, a little bit negative one because, you know, we're next to the residence. We're tight against DPW. It doesn't really give you that offering, you know, a we'll walk around and get a nice natural view. And zoning, I didn't, I kept those all even, didn't really see an issue with the zoning up there. But, so that's how I, I landed, like most everyone else did, with Bishop being at the number one, 15 Washington, two, 25 Brook Street, three. Uh, to me, it did seem, after looking at everyone's score, it seemed that 25 Brook Street's kind of a pretty, looks almost like a back burner site to me now. It looks like Bishop and 115 Washington are the one, ones to pursue. I can go with that as that. Somebody I'll make a motion well. that we eliminate 25 Brook Street for our next conversation. Everybody already did. For that yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. We don't need a motion. I would make no, one. Well, yeah, you do. You, you do. need a motion. Right. You, you know, okay. well, well, maybe yeah. it's been like any discussion. Any discussion? Any reason to keep it? All right. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Says aye. All right. Wonderful. We're down to two sites. I would make one well, comment. Good. 
about what Dan was saying. You know, one thing that worries me financially for this project, because of the cost, is utilities. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it, it could be it, it could be the number that hurts Bishop. I'm not I'm not favoring anything right now, but mm -hmm. but we Wilbraham, the town hall of Wilbraham was on separate. And they that separate was not gonna work for us. It was not sized for the new senior center. And we have bought wetlands. And the water table was down about 30, 36 inches. We were going to have a real big problem with something. So the town decided that they were going to run a sewer line down to town hall, and then we would connect to a pumping tank that is adjacent, and town hall would tie into the same tank, and we would pump to wherever it was going. We could not afford that. The town, because they 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 kind of said, well, it's the town hall needs to be on it. It's been on their subject for four years. And they felt like they had to upgrade it or they were going to do something. So they decided to fund that fairly lengthy. It was about a mile and a half of street door, plus all the pumping and everything to the site. So it was it was a big number and we, we couldn't fit it. I'm sorry, just for the purposes of, the, of eliminating Brook Street, and I, I certainly agree with that decision, um, um, I think it would be helpful for the committee if the meeting minutes would reflect why Brook Street. That is, I, I don't know yeah. if we were verbose, other than the fact that it scored lowest, which is well, certainly true. It was an independent score by everybody, so it's important right. that it did you score. You follow the scorecards. Yeah, so I, that this, these these scoring sheets would be included in as reference materials. They're actually on the website. Yeah. So, but I think I see your point. We're we're all agreeing that when we rated it across the site criteria, it rated the lowest, and the architecture firm was not even able to place the building on right. that site. I mean, so I therefore, we that something therefore we're voting to remove it from consideration. Okay. Can I backtrack? Oh, yeah, I, 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 and, uh, I mean, to your point about, you know, you couldn't afford the utilities at, at, at one point. It, you know, it seems to me that um, not all of these criteria are of equal importance. And uh, utilities being, you know, high among the importance and topology, you know, these things that I, I, I probably really can't judge very well. But, you know, they may rear their, their heads at some point in, in the process. So, I, um, you know, my, my point is that I think these numbers alone don't tell enough of the story that we really need to know more about the utilities, their costs in particular. And that, you know, we might we might be forced to change our minds. Well that's true. That 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 could very well happen. It doesn't happen forced to change our minds to Brook Street? No, to probably to, to whatever you pick. Yeah. Okay. Because to give you an idea of water I think one of the sites, two of the sites have water, right? Bishop, I mean, um, Washington, yeah, and Brook have water. If we don't have water, that becomes a public water, and that's a hundred thousand dollar well. I could drill a well in my backyard for ten or twelve thousand, check the water, and it's drinkable. But for a public well, it's a whole set of requirements but, that need to be met. Oh, so the water. Well, the, the water's not that far from Fletcher Road. It's right down the street. I mean, I don't think how much it would cost. I, mean, I just wonder. I know. Well, maybe that. I'm just saying that water is sewer. So electricity is is. is and as as we move forward, would it be possible to get just sort of a rough cost estimate yeah. for the utilities, particularly at Bishop? So that's right. what I was planning to do: is kind of look at 
you know, where the nearest water sewer are, use our latest mass QT weighted bid prices for public bidding and, and kind of put together a rough, real rough estimate. Thanks. But for water and sewer especially, I'm actually I'm meeting with National Grid on a different project, mm -hmm. I'm meeting with their overhead electric um, engineer. So I'm going to kind of get a, see if I can get a feelers from him if he can help me out on that end of, because, you know, you're going to have to bring in power I don't think it's there's gas by the triangle down there. No, oh, so it's by the triangle. It's in the, everything's at that triangle. Yeah, <laughs> so, yeah, because it's kind of close to the odd end. here. Because right. yeah. yeah, and even water and sewer. Devons has water and sewer in the triangle, everything. and we have water and sewer over by the uh, railroad tracks. Yeah. So you kind of so I, see I, which way to go. I wanted to make just one quick comment. For this is a perfect example of why this process is so difficult. When we took on the task of trying to find a piece of land, which we've done for like three years trying to do this, we started yeah. with, you know, let's find something downtown, let's find something over here. We find no private land, so was, we worked our way through the public land. So no matter what we do, we're going to have a complication with the land. As long as it's public land, town owned land, it's going to have an issue because there's no private that, land. And, and, all the time. For me, I think. I'm trying to keep my eye on the prize, and that is, and I certainly understand that the utilities would be expensive and they're going to be an integral part of what, it, you know, right at this point, whether it be Washington Street or Bishop Road. But it's, I mean, for me, the larger consideration is where will people want to go? Yeah. Where during their daily drive? If they're coming home from the grocery store, where are they likely to stop in? Or on, if they're on their way to town hall or doing their errands yeah. or, you know, whatever the case may be. That is the least, the less expensive utilities might put us in a position where it inhibits future growth. Yeah. Uh, well, and I think that's the, the balance that we're trying to get to is when we take a look at our final two sites, we would be weighing the orientation that you're going to come up with against the utilities, against the location of the site. I mean, ownership is the same. The school, the Broughton Park Road site has potential to have ledge. That's something we need to look into as well. So I, I, we have to do a little digging, yeah, I, so to speak. Actually, yeah, so, got that don't you? <laughs> so yeah, what would be what would be the Maybe. next step? So you estimating the utilities is you know that's what you call that the other day, desk, desktop. It's yeah. helpful, but it's a desktop exercise. Yeah. What is the next step as far as investigating um something beyond that? And are we ready to take the next step? Is it you gotta pick a step? We can dig, you can go out there with a the backhoe and dig. Let's say we have two sites for argument's sake. You can go out and dig, dig a couple of 12 foot deep holes, see what's going on, where the water table is. Um, when you say we, I mean, you're <laughs> <laughs> him. If we got deep hole tests, we're talking about having somebody take a look at the water table. Yeah, that's we'll have a little high. We we'll have a geotech. Average high water. We carry some money for the geotech. You can do that. Yeah, we'll have the geotech. And and what they we well, need. He's a, got, he may have been able to do. You also do you have a soils certified soils? We don't have that. So we don't have like the certified soils. Yeah, because they can look at the soil soils value meter. Yeah, that's an important part of it for for water and wet. You know, they can look at yeah, it. Right, right. They know where high water was. In the soils. Yeah, mm -hmm. and um. And also, I think we'll find the water table a couple of sites in each site. You know, if it's dry, like in Wilbraham, water table is at thirty-six inches. Uh, it was close. We built that site up as part of it. We built it up almost 20, 24, 30 inches, um, and we did the same thing on Long Meadow. Type of they actually the, it was out of adjacent to a playing field, and they had. Put in drain tile. It's all wet. So, just remind. But you run into these things, and and I would not get dwelling on too much. What we need to do is let's get Dan give us his off the cuff numbers for for getting some utilities to these sites. And as far as gas goes, propane is it's more expensive item, but 
propane that's been used, we use that although natural gas. Um, Sorry, but, but what what we'll do is let let's say for argument's sake, I'm, I'm not picking it. We have two sites. But we just voted. We have to yeah, we have two yeah. sites. So now what we might want to do is set up a time with Dan and his crew to dig a couple holes. And maybe then or maybe not, we may want to have soil for that. Probably if we can dig a couple holes, we can get a good idea. Yeah. <clears throat> and you do have records. Evidently, there's no other buildings that have been built on these sites that we know of. Ours are, no. It's always exciting when you discover something. <laughs> Yeah, no, and and is there anything there? I think you we have this record showed that as a, the the which one yes, and I wish it was an old record on the USGS and it showed that location as something else. So, I know maps, maybe well, it's worth looking at, but we are concerned about some contamination at the brush site. Yeah, isn't there some PFPs or whatever they there, there is um well more Army Air Force Base does have P PFAS contamination, PFAS. but you know that would be down in the water and we'll be servicing water for public water supply. So you know if some of that has migrated down, I don't know. Yeah, as long as we're not doing our own well, that's great. Yeah. Yeah. You can't do a well over there, so that no, part of the uh, no the Shepherd landfill is not part of it. Oh, no, this is outside that land use control area. Yeah, so this is actually been okay if you had to. But well, you know, I guess it, but tonight, if we work on the DPW property, do we have access to construction materials, soil materials? For instance, he said he had to do a fill. Would there be material that we can excavate on site and use to fill a level of grade a lot? Free. Potentially. I mean, it's on yes, the same it's site. Could the place possibly is use a borrow yeah, yeah. from somewhere else. In the so we could yeah, potentially, potentially have another cost savings on the construction side of it from the land development yeah. side. Because you borrow. Yeah. Because the other side, there's no way. Everything's going to be brought in the ticket. Yeah. Yeah. It's not going to be any kind of bill. It's going to be able to just get rid of it, bring it back. Do we, when do we do we want to look at now or at what point in the, I guess one of the things that you know this architectural firm and all the others said is you know visibility is important and traffic and having it accessible for the seniors and yep. easily drivable and Key. is critical. Um in terms of Bishop Road and or and uh Harvard, you know, which where does the advantage lie in those? In terms of in, in terms of just traffic or ease of access right. for the for the population we're trying location image is not first on your list of when I looked at when we when we did the contract with Catlin. Did Catlin estimate how many sites that they were gonna have to potentially drop a building on and evaluate? He didn't? He just did a value. He didn't do it. Right, what I'm saying is, you, you would have had a night. You would have had. You, you would have probably gone up to like five sites. I'd say something. Like that. Well, a couple of centers we've done. Well, right, but never I'm, I'm, one of them. No, I'm <laughs> just saying, in in this particular yeah. short contract that we have, yeah. two sites is not an undoable. No, it's, it's no, doable, very doable. We'll we'll lay in the building sites. on. Oh yeah. Okay. Absolutely. I just want to double check. No, no. Well, I think you narrowed it down to two sites. We want to. We want to get the full. Value of both sites, I don't have a problem with that. Yeah, okay. um, what, what's really critical is I notice it's interesting. I'm not as familiar with town, but um, and I'll have to drive around more often. Uh, I get lost easy. Um, location image, I know there's quite a bit of variation on that. That's what I was just going to say. I'm just looking at this saying, I was just seeing that too. And, 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 if you had to look at these two sites, which one has the most visibility and the most accessibility? I mean, I would say it's just road. Both for some other site. What? I would say, yeah. Don't think it was four to three for Washington. 
There's Did some. There's some. It seems to be pretty major roads leading to the uh, school site mm -hmm. versus Bishop. I remember trying to get to Bishop. We we're wandering up the back road. Is there a more direct way there? That... No, but Bishop. I mean, and again, these are my perceptions yeah. of it. Yeah. Bishop Road is closer to downtown, mm -hmm. and more easily accessible for people who are yeah. moving in slower traffic. Okay. You know, along Park Street, Groton Harvard, you know, the Washington Street piece, there's more people traveling at a higher rate of, because there's nothing else there. Mm -hmm. It tends to be more people traveling at a higher rate of speed going from point A to point B, and they pass by there frequently, either on their way to school, perhaps to the transfer station, or as part of their commute going from one end of the town to the other. Is there one? Road that leads to the bishop site. Mm -hmm. There's one yes. road, right? Mm -hmm. It's the one that we drove on, Dan. You know. And it didn't seem to be a highly developed road. It would no, be, you mean bishop? That's what we call it. No, I'm sorry. The, the, I call it the brush site. Yeah, right, yes. right. Yep. right next to the cemetery. Right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, nobody nobody uses that road. No, it's, yeah. it's quite a few yeah. people who use that road. <laughs> I live on the other side of town. <laughs> so you have to come live on the wrong side. Of town. I'll, I'll let you guys look at that. I'll see a commuter. Um, <laughs> action steps, though. We, we have two sites. We, we have two sites, and Dan's going to look into the utilities costs. Do we want, and we're, we're talking about sort of the idea of the access and the visibility and the traffic. Are there any other tangible items that we need that we need to be working on before our next meeting to get us to a place where we might? So I think Dan should also. Katie, he said if we can do some test holes at Groton Harvard Road, if we can find out if we have Phil available out uh, somewhere on site, well, we can save a significant amount of money to so, to level the site. You know, I mean, that's two things you'd have to look into too. I think, right? So can we? I don't think we can do a soil sample at. Gr Harvard Road until so we have yeah. an official school committee. Yeah, I'm not thinking, yeah. So, I, I mean, I I guess the, my question would be, what of that of that soil step would be something that you would do versus something something that would need to be hired out? Because if you're going to hire somebody, you'd want them to do both sites at the same time. So I guess. Uh, well, we'd like question. to be present for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. I. You know what? I don't think that's a decision you have to make right away. But what, what I really like is just a ballpark utility idea. Yeah. And then I think Dan A versus Dan B. Dan um, B. <laughs> a B. You're B or B. B. <laughs> um, um, what we might want to do is get a sat photo and show it'll help me to better understand. I'd like to show these two key sites in relationship to the, to the geographic area of the town, um, especially how Devin's plays it to the game. And we do have you know desktop data available for the soils out there. So yeah, my engineer would have that too. Web soil survey. Yeah. You could either go online there, or there's a Middlesex County um, soil survey. We have that data. Yeah, you know, I did look at it. The materials at Bishop Road are very good, well graded type A soils yeah. as they're called, yeah. and it, it does show surface Brain, ledge over at the other site, at the yeah. Grunt Harvard site, and in pretty much all the areas you can see it there. So you know, just initially, we already know what we're probably getting into, but doing the test fits yeah. will really give us the yeah field confirmation. Can you just send us, have... send, send us a link to those soils? Yeah, yeah. I can get that. Yeah. I don't want to wake up my civil engineer too soon. He's <laughs> difficult. He's very good. He's very good. He sleeps a lot of it. Huh? Yeah, no. No. You see that guy too? Mm -hmm. Is he an old guy too? Yeah, like me. No, he's a lot younger. He's like a child like you. So what's he doing napping then? Yeah, I know. So we did conclude already that Catlin wants to control the civil engineering. Oh, that's what we want, right? But yeah. We have a couple of local civil engineers in town that have done a lot of work. Stand a lot of land. Right. Uh, that's really yeah, control the whole thing. Okay. He's, he's very good. 
one thing that we do carry when in our proposal was for geotech, but we really don't want to release the geotech until this group has really picked us up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, because there, there, there's a lot of and geotech. I would recommend if a site, if an ultimate site's picked, we'd like to do a full geotech. We go, we go down one fusel depth of twenty feet or so. Because the one thing you also don't use is, is some kind of layer of organic material that mm -hmm. screws everything up. Yeah. Also, the, the, another surprise could be very, very large chunks of ledge, not ledge, but oh, erratics erratic. buried in there. And that's part of our little digging size. We won't just dig one hole. We'll dig one. Yeah. No, we definitely can provide test yeah. fits from yeah. our highway vision of work. And that will help us with water you need to. Yeah. I walked um, to Groton Avenue Road. There's a lot of um, asphalt that's been dumped over there. Right? Yeah. Well, well, good. Like, we can grind it up. Like, Truckloads. You know, somebody just had some left over, they just dropped. It was like toward the detention base. Must have been DPW at the morning. It was all over. It was all over. In that field, all over. You left the rug and sweep it. Yeah. <laughs> that, was, that was before Not my time. Yeah. <laughs> that can be removed. Yeah. I can't remove it to keep the brush stones and then yeah. uh, grind it and put it in later. Oh, save it. So, so that's a first we want to move forward with some additional information about desktop level soil information and, and, utility, yeah. and utilities and we'll continue that part of this discussion later um okay any so other place of building in both sides well, right okay yeah we haven't done it yet on the okay no, in the program draft yeah yeah, yeah. we'll yeah. get that okay. sorted out all right great so there's, um, there's any... natural gas up at the there's no natural grass on the side of the street that we're talking about going by the little trucking company it's on washington street I don't sure. remember off the top of my head. I don't know. Definitely not. I can. Oh, actually, I actually have to wrote it down. It's something you get. And take a minute to find. Oh, nothing. This should be utilities. Oh, it's on that second page, and I don't think I included anybody's second page. Yeah. No, gas is yeah, gas is available on Broughton Road. It is. Yeah. 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 Nobody connected. So, anything else for the site rankings? That's very helpful. Um, all right. So, I think that brings us to the select board update, and that is their next meeting that we will be on the agenda is. Um, the 18th of June. And I apologize, I was hoping to have a draft of that presentation um, available for review tonight. Um, but I was thinking it would just be a history of what we've done so far. We went from the 54 sites down to three. We've engaged, yeah, we've engaged an architect. We've worked on the draft program. We've narrowed it to two. That's sort of what I was thinking, um, are there other elements of that that we want to make sure that the select board is aware of? Did you mention the RFP? Oh, yep, yep. I'm going to put that in there. I, I'm, given the setting, I think it would, it would be good to acknowledge or mention that we're aware of the need for public outreach, that we will be soliciting input from the community yeah. regarding questions about program size and and all the rest of it. That is, I think it's important that the community understand that we are not shoving this down their throat for lack of a better way of saying That is, we're not, we are providing them some information and wanting their suggestions as to how best to develop this program and that the select board be aware of that. Uh, That's critical. Absolutely, because critical. I think that a lot of people watch, you know, more than more so than here, perhaps watch the uh, select board meetings, so they'll be more aware of 
you know, we're open to their suggestions. Mm -hmm. I think we had talked about that too, being you know, trying to be helpful in that process, putting mm -hmm. together presentation and PowerPoint and, and then call together not only the COA group, but down the line because the the best way to win over a project is making sure everybody has input, stakeholders, everybody. Yeah. A chance to voice. And so the object what we'll do also, we'll hear some objections that will be useful to deal with and answer and respond to. Some valid and some maybe a little, a little out there, like I've had my experience in town meetings. So, and the idea is to get to town meeting without, with as few objections as possible or having answered as many as possible. So that's a very, I think it's critical for select board to do that. And especially with a wider audience. All right. Any other items um, under public input? We're ready for that. That's why I was just going to ask. Any any other things on discussion before we check public input? Okay. You had something you wanted to put. Yeah. Okay. Go ahead. I, I just I just want to uh, remind you and ask you to invite other people to come to our initial meeting of the Friends of the COA, which is tomorrow, one o'clock here. And, uh, you know, that's a, a great avenue to help advocate for this as well as advocate for the, the current COA. And to clarify for anyone who might be listening to this later, the Friends of a COA group is a 501c3 uh, fundraising organization um, that can help with both costs of operating the uh, Council on Aging that you know the town budget doesn't meet, but most importantly, can assist in fundraising for for the upcoming project. So, Pauline has thank her, you. Pauline yep. has her hand up. Yep. All right, go ahead, Pauline. Good evening, Katie. Thank you for recognizing me. Um, just so Carolyn knows, if she doesn't already, I have advocated for people to attend tomorrow's meeting. Um, uh, hopefully people will. Um, and as you know, Katie, I have really tried to publicize the um, senior center meetings. And I'm sorry to say with very, oh, what do I want to say? Slow results? That's not even the right word. I get a lot of feedback on my page but nobody attends the meeting. So I don't know what to say to you. Um, but I do have a couple of questions. I, I will continue to do so as best I can. I'm happy to see my friend Pat in the audience. The um, draft program that you all discussed at length tonight, I did not see that as one of the documents. Will that be on the website? It is. It's actually back in the packet from um, May 22nd was the first time it was discussed. So it's okay. in that. We'll I will look. Is. And is that yeah. the updated version? Because you all discussed updates tonight. Right. So I don't even have that. That was a, a the architecture firm brought that. So I'm going to. Yeah, that has been emailed to me during this meeting. I'll make sure it gets posted tomorrow. Perfect. And I really don't have any other questions, but again, I just commend you all. You all are doing a great job. Um, I will say this, the feedback about Groton Harvard Road on my page, uh, what is that what you call a Facebook page? I guess so, was a little disappointing because people seem to think it's gonna smell. Oh, I don't know why, but you know, there's nothing no odors coming from the transfer station that I've ever experienced. So please keep considering that. I, I do think that's the better preference, but that's my personal opinion. Not a dumb Thank you. <laughs> and welcome, Jim. Happy to see you there. Smile. Yeah, wave. Okay. <laughs> Y'all have a good night. Thank you. <laughs> Any other public input? Um, yeah. I think a couple of Dan, and I know this is probably not that important to this, but when, when the bridge gets started, the bridge over on um, West Main, will traffic be diverted up Vision? Uh, no, it's going to be phased construction with one-way alternating traffic. So okay. there'll be like a T 
temporary street like on each side of the approaches to the oh. bridge. So oh. so they will but I bet you a lot of people might start going around <laughs> yeah, once they find yeah. it. Yeah. I mean if yeah. you're my house, that's what I do. Yeah. But um anyway. And is that gonna start soon or um so we've had some issues with utility coordination, but I would expect to have a bid, I'm hoping, don't mark my words. Um in the summer a bid go out. Because we just wrapped up some issues we had with significant utilities. I just wondered about that construction. It's one of the ways to get it. Uh, yeah, so uh, like I said, it's one way alternating. Yeah. And if people know the way around, they might hop on McPherson and Bishop if it's easier. Yeah. Uh, and the only other thing I really had was um, how are you going to go about getting public opinion? Is that those questionnaires involved? All residents or just senior residents? So I, I think that, oh, we go out to everybody, everybody, everybody. So we have that we've really defined what that process may be, but it certainly will be seeking the input of, of residents. But it, we, have to, we have to wait a little bit because we have to have something to show them for them to comment on. So that's why we've been trying to get kind of to maybe one or two steps from where we are now. Okay. Um, but yeah, I, I would anticipate that being some highly publicized meetings that are more open in nature. Um, you can certainly do like an online survey or- um, So there's gonna be a document that people will- Yeah, and, and I will take tips from the architecture firm as well, because they've done this a lot in terms of what is most successful, but we'll, we'll probably try multiple avenues um, just so that people can contribute in the most convenient way possible to them. And I think that would start a lot of people. Yeah. Having a conversation. That's the last. It's my person. Uh, is there any chance that there's going to be gardening places that I'm mean, not sure? It, it's all, it will be developed over time. It depends upon the site and what's available, but I don't. A lot of our sites. We often do, <clears throat> we often, it, I always like to encourage a garden club yeah. because two things. One is like, if you go to Millbury, we did that maybe 30 mm -hmm. years ago. We created a walk area, a very large outdoor walk area around with a gazebo at one end. And you went around in a big square and it was all planted in the garden club maintains the uh, perennial gardens, a lot of annuals. And, I think they do a little bit of vegetable work too, but it really it it's it's part of the program that you will be asking for or looking for, and then it can be developed, you know, with the committee. That's how that flow. Landscaping is a yeah. I I worked at the um, senior center and brought in all the gardening. Yeah, and it really. It, you know, I mean, to talk about having you know, full mm -hmm. mm -hmm. but to be outside and do mm -hmm. In fact, a lot of our patios have plantings, mm -hmm. and it's best not to leave it to DPW. <laughs> huh? Oh, we are the It's done with love. Yeah. Oh, yeah. right. For the sake of our next meeting, um, when do you guys want to? In terms of table, table for a second. <laughs> yeah. We're going to supply you with plans, right? very early schematic plans. And and it'll take us not very long. Maybe the end of next week. And then we can get those out to you an email for everybody to look at and comment. Yeah. And it's just it's really putting together that program that you've been looking at um into a series of cases that we call arrival. And we can get those before the next meeting so I can post them yeah, on yeah. for anyone to follow along. Sure. That'd be great. Um, so, and then Dan, in terms of your deliverables as far as utilities and then looking at soil survey data, um, 
it won't take long. I just got to find time. But yeah, I'd say, well, they'll be done in the next week with plans. I'll make sure I'm done and the next week with it. Yeah, so maybe you meet the last week of June. Or... What about the soil? Mm -hmm. I, I mean, the, the utilities. That's what he's yeah, talking about doing cost yeah. estimating for that. Yeah. So last week of June, we want to stick with Wednesday. I don't. I, I can't, I don't know what day Rob's availability is. Are you available more nights than Wednesdays now? Is your, yeah. how's, your, how's your team doing? Pretty open. No, they, yeah. everything just ended. So. Okay. <laughs> oh, no, is that good or bad? They're only seven years old. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's all <laughs> fun. It's all yeah. fun. Yeah. Oh. Chaos. Yeah. <laughs> okay, think, um, June 26th. That's yeah. a Wednesday. Does that work for everyone? Yeah. I just pulled that data. Because the fall week is the 4th of July week. Yeah. yeah that's not good. <clears throat> all right. Um, all right. So Wednesday, June 26th, I will check in with the town manager's office to make sure that that works with the other things. Um, if we're able to meet in town hall it we can both be air conditioned and here at the same time we don't have to choose between those two <laughs> Whereas here we do um and if not we'll we can meet here so no, i will this is comfortable this is a comfortable spot, spot. I, I don't i mean oh you know it, right. you don't yeah, it's not right, 85 also, degrees outside either what's that it's not 85 degrees outside either that's right yeah. six o'clock Six o'clock. Yep, that seems to work for us pretty well. All right. Uh, anything else, or do we have a motion to motion adjourn? adjourn? All right. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Chair says aye. We are adjourned at eight oh eight p.m. <laughs>